What's up, nature freaks? What's going on? Dave and Jeremy here. We are back in our studio, and due to the coronavirus, not unlike many of you guys who can't go to work, businesses are shutting down. Well, as you know, we do a traveling show. We're not doing any shows this month. Completely canceled, not only through March, but through April. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to pump out a whole bunch of awesome videos highlighting the animals that we would normally use in our presentations. That's right. In order to prevent your minds from turning to Jello from Fortnite, Minecraft, and Roblox, don't get me wrong, I love video games. We're going to be highlighting a new animal every day, hopefully to get two to three of these out per week to just keep education going. Today is the amazing green anaconda, the biggest, heaviest snake in the world. That's right. So get ready for some jumbo size nature in your face. Nature in your face! All right, well, here she is. This is Kate, that's her last name. First name, Suffa, Suffa Kate, the female green anaconda. Now there are four species of anacondas, but we're just gonna highlight this one today, the biggest, baddest anaconda of them all. That's right, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people know the green anaconda because it's the heaviest snake in the world, considered the biggest snake in the world. It's talked about a lot. Not a lot of people talk about the other three, like the yellow anaconda, but this is a highly aquatic species. Now, if you can see the tongue flicking, I'm pretty sure that camera down there is going to get it. They can smell underwater. That's incredible. You cannot smell underwater, nor would you want to, but they hunt prey like fish, turtles, caiman. Just a, it's an awesome snake. And scientists have just recently found out that unlike most other constrictors that suffocate their prey, anacondas do not do that. What they do is they prevent blood flow to the brain, which kills their prey quicker. Now, the reason that's a huge advantage is because these snakes take down very large prey that can injure them when they are uh, in, in mid-constriction with claws, with teeth. These things will eat jaguars. That's a 250-pound <laughs> cat, caiman crocodiles. So the goal is kill it quick, or it could do some real damage to the snake when it's trying to eat. Yeah, now obviously this snake right here, not eating a jaguar, okay? It's not anywhere near being fully grown. How old is this snake, Dave? This is D um, Dave's snake. Yeah, It's only a few years old, right? About four years old. About so. four years old, so nowhere near the full size it could get. All right, now due to their large size, they have large babies. They're sexually mature at about four and a half years old, and the females give birth to living young. They can be two feet long, which is the largest of any snake at birth. Yeah, so the anaconda is related to the boa constrictor, and the boas are ovoviviparous. Ooh, big word yeah, there. Yeah, big word there. So <laughs> all that means is instead of being oviparous, egg-laying like the python, so the pythons have external eggs, just like a bird, the embryo develops inside of there, and then they hatch all externally. Ovoviviparous means internal eggs that the babies develop inside the mother, hatch in the mom, and then like Dave said, live birth after that. Now, if you can see the eyes of the snake, they're kind of unique as far as the large species of snake. They're located more on top of the head, and that goes with that aquatic, almost like an alligator. They just sit, um, body submerged, eyes and head, just poking up above the water. That way, when prey come down to drink, boom, they can launch out and grab them. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of fear associated with the green anaconda with the movie, the anaconda, obviously the snake chasing people, eating multiple people. That's not how this happens. Although this is one of the two species in the world that have been documented to eat humans on very rare occasions. Mm -hmm. Now look at their color. The color is not only green like the murky water, as Jeremy mentioned, they're highly aquatic, but they also have these orange and black spots on the body, which breaks up the outline of this animal, making it pretty much invisible to any animal that would come to the water to drink. And that's usually when they uh, will take food. Uh, anything from a tapir to, as we mentioned, a jaguar, they'll just wait for that animal to get close, they'll grab it, and rather than even have to cut that circulation off, as I mentioned, they'll just drown the animal. Obviously mammals, they can't hold their breath as long as a reptile, they'll pull it to the water, drown it, swallow it whole. Right, and if it was on land, it doesn't have to drown. I mean, it is a constrictor. Mm -hmm. They get massive, and that's when they would use their constriction to be able to take down an animal. Now, the problem with being one of the biggest snakes in the world is during times of drought, when they get hot, once a large snake heats up, super hard for them to cool down. That's usually what causes their demise, them to die, are those heat spells. 
Now also, if they got too cold, it takes a lot longer to heat up that body because you guys know the cold-blooded ectotherms, they are not producing their own body heat like we do. All right, so, you know, we're using kind of slow movements here. Yeah. <laughs> this, this snake is not aggressive, but I just brought him out, and sometimes if I handle him roughly, he can turn and he can grab. You do not want to get bit by this snake. They have yeah. huge this is teeth. This is a she. Dave just has yeah, an yeah, issue. I do. He, he I do calls everything a him, <laughs> and someone's going to call us out on that. Right, right. But this <laughs> is a girl. Yes, does have some wicked six rows of teeth curved back. But, hey, when you're grabbing stuff in the water, if you miss, boom. It is gone, all right? So you have to have those teeth for holding on to. And yeah, the anacondas, if they're not worked with all the time, they're super intelligent animals, they kind of get a little leery. They're like, listen, you haven't been holding me in a while. I might not want to be touched a whole lot. Now, speaking of intelligence, I hear from a lot of people at our shows, they say snakes are dumb, they have a tiny brain, all they do is drag their belly. You know, I think intelligence in an animal is simply being able to reproduce and continue the species. That's as smart as you have to be. These guys have been doing that for a long time. Think about this. This is an animal that lacks what every other animal on the planet needs to be successful, which would be limbs. Um, uh, they don't have any external ears. So it's basically a limbless animal that doesn't hear like most other animals, yet it's just as successful. So how can you call this thing anything but highly intelligent for what it is? Basically a giant hot dog. No, exactly. Routine. And back, even back to the tongue flicking, it is constantly checking out its environment, always changing, updating information that it's receiving from that tongue. They are always thinking, reading into that, and then they react to that. So, I mean, that right there, that's a sign of intelligence for sure. That's right. And, you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't consider myself very lucky for being able to work this closely with an anaconda. Um, they are, they're they're not endangered in the wild, but they're losing a lot of habitat, which is unfortunate. So, you know, as a child... This is the first snake you pretty much learn about when you start reading about animals, just because it's iconic size. So when I was a child, I, it, you know, I read those books, wondering, man, one day I just want right. to see this in the wild, and and I want to work with it in captivity. And here we are with this beautiful animal, this close, this personal, getting to work with it every day. It's phenomenal. yeah, exactly. I mean, back to the habitat loss. When you're a bigger animal, <clears throat> you need more habitat. Same with the Goliath frog, the biggest frog in the world which we're gonna do frogs later on, but the same thing, more habitat goes away, the bigger animals are gonna disappear first. So, uh, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed this anaconda. We're gonna keep these short so we can get mm -hmm. several species out during the week. Dave, what do you think? Uh, I just wanna thank Kate for not biting us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and put Kate back I on the table. Because her in a while, right? Without her <laughs> tagging Dave. Very yeah. gingerly. There she's you go. Being, Look at that girl. She, she, she was a sweetheart today. So uh, Yeah, she was amazing. And if you're fortunate enough to come see a show, you might see Kate mm -hmm. out and about. She does go to shows. She does um, let people touch her. I think she likes kids more, more than she than likes that. me and Dave. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that works out really well. All right. All, All right, guys. guys. Thanks again. That wraps it up. Stay tuned because we're about to release more episodes of some of our show animals. Yeah, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. If you want to see an animal highlighted, let us know in the comments. We want to talk to you. We want to hear from you. 